so my name is Xiao Qian, uh, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, grid binary logistic regression law, uh, building shared model without sharing data. So here's my outline. Uh, scientific research is an integrated body of collecting data, running experiments, and validating uh, ex uh, hypotheses. In biomedical informatics, sharing code, data, and process help other researchers, and therefore has the potential to speed up scientific discoveries. Uh, open code has been widely accepted. Since the GNU project and the Open Software Foundation, uh, there has been many uh, different open source licenses developed by people. On the other hand, uh, open data has encountered many difficulties. There's little incentive, limited model to implement, and a binary decision to make. Uh, one of the major reasons of uh, the reluctance in data sharing is about privacy risk. So uh, see the, this table shows a 33 years old male lives in uh, the zip code 92122. It did not denote the name, but when linked with the public voter registry, you can see Andy has heart disease, something that shouldn't be disclosed to the public. So that is really a hard decision to make. As we just mentioned, the current mechanism of sharing raw data, or the so-called anonymized data, uh, is through data use agreement, uh, which can limit uh, and undermine the ability of researchers and clinicians to access, aggregate, and analyze patient record at point of care. So today I'm going to talk about an alternative approach, which falls in the Model 3 of uh, Dr. Ana Machado's uh, first slide. The idea is to build and share a global predictive model without exchanging data at record level. This approach alleviates the privacy risk without undermining the uh, ability to uh, do prediction. As long as the model can be appropriately de uh, decomposed, we can use secure multi-party computing to ensure privacy preserving numerical optimization, uh, which guarantees exactly the same result as if all the data are being collected in one place. So here's a high-level overview of the WebGlow modules. A user first uh, access the authentication page and provide login information. Then he, she can initiate a query, for example, uh, building a logistic regression model for hospital uh, readmission based on uh, age, gender, and uh, social economic status. The query passed through the communication protocol uh, to the participating uh, institutions. At each local institution, uh, site 1 to site n, they use the previous calculated parameter vector to calculate a summary statistical table. And this partial uh, statistic table will be sent back to uh, the GLOW code. Uh, when all the parties responded, uh, the GLOW code centralized uh, module will aggregate the result and uh, compute the next iteration of the uh, parameter. This uh, process keeps uh, iterating until the model gets converged. So today's uh, concentration is on logistic regression model. We built a web glow service, which is a uh, web service providing uh, different uh, users from different locations uh, a service to collaborate uh, in an efficient and a secure manner. In specific, this uh, web service only exchange m-dimensional gradient vector and a m by m Hessian matrix from the server to the client and a m-dimensional uh, parameter vector from the server to the client up to 20 iterations. So let's quickly review the logistic regression model. Logistic regression model is a generalized linear model that takes multiple confounders or single confounders to build, uh, to infer a binary outcome through maximum likelihood estimation. For example, we can build a fever model uh, using uh, measured uh, temperature as the only confounder. The typical way of uh, solving logistic regression model is to use newton raphson algorithm. To do that, we first derive the log likely function from the logistic regression model. Uh, the function is a concave one, so there's a single global optimum. Therefore, we can use the maximum likelihood estimation uh, to obtain these parameters. Uh, this Newton Raphson uh, algorithm, starting from a random point uh, on the log likelihood function, and you find its corresponding point in the L tilde, which is the uh, first derivative, uh, following the steepest direction, 
and you get to point 2. Using the same protocol, you find its corresponding point in the first derivative, L tilde, and follow the steepest direction uh, to get to point 3. At each iteration, uh, the points are getting closer to the global optimum point 4. Our contribution is to identify a way to uh, decompose the newton raphson algorithm into linear components. For example, assuming our data are horizontally stackable from two institutions, A and B, we can decompose the log likely function uh, into components that are only matching to the single institutions. So we do not need to uh, exchange a records level information and only need to exchange uh, information that aggregated from a single institution. Uh, the detailed components are described in the text box. Uh, the, the pi function is the logistic regression function I showed uh, in the first slide of this section. So we first developed the backbone in R and Java to validate the model. Our uh, next step was originally to develop uh, client-side UI to wrap up the APIs. However, during this process, we encountered several challenges. We identified that a healthcare environment are reluctant to install third-party uh, third so software, and they are uh, unwilling to open um, new ports for software. Uh, due to these reasons, we decided to build a web service to overcome the challenge. Uh, the basic idea is to use applet servlet architecture and make the communication transparent. So once you open a web browser and access to the web gloss service, a uh, virtual machine is downloaded into your web browser, turning your browser into a VM. And then the communication happens online. Uh, our very first web service, uh, Glow One, uh, and I will show you a quick demo. So here's uh, two uh, server and uh, the first party create a test, a task. So putting the name of the task, expiration date, and then putting the initiate email and invite another party to participate. And then here you specify the local training data. And you click create. So you see uh, this party is ready, the status is one, and the other party is waiting. and then turns to the second uh, participant uh, who just received an email with a unique link. and So she will do the same, uh, specify a different file on this local machine. These are the features from both parties, so they are consistent. And this, uh, the second party is also ready. So getting back to the initiator. So now both parties are ready, and you can click Compute. So the applet takes over, and the iteration uh, happens very quickly. And both party gets uh, AUC of 0 0.687. So these are consistent. And you can clip uh, the global report, uh, where you see the AUC and the ROC plot, uh, HR test, and attribute level statistic. So you can also uh, see this uh, unique link uh, saved to your local machine. And you can do this local uh, report, comparing your local model versus global. After everything is done, you can test your normal data using the global model just constructed. So this. Uh, although the WebGlow 1.0 uh, provides some uh, fundamental functionalities for online collaboration, it's still missing uh, a number of useful components. So we recently improved WebGlow 1.0 to address these limitations. Now I will show some validation experiment using two clinical data sets. The first data is uh, uh, cancer biomarker data, which has two confounders and one binary outcome indicating whether uh, the patient has uh, breast cancer. Uh, as you can see, uh, this table uh, is the result of our uh, two-site uh, web law and uh, centralized logistic regression. As the result shows no difference, so I just show one table. Uh, the model converges very quickly in seven iterations, all these three parameters, intercept x1, x2. And uh, as a side effect, uh, the GLOW is, is more efficient than the logistic regression centralized version because uh, the computation uh, is shared by the two participating party. Uh, 
And I also try this on another data set, Edinburgh myocardial infarction, which has uh, uh, more uh, samples, 1,281 samples. Uh, like before, I get exactly the same table, uh, uh, and also showed no difference in HR test and AUC. Our last experiment was conducted through our collaborator without our intervention. Uh, Dr. Casey Mosolo uh, from Cincinnati Children's Hospital tried out WebGlow using their own data, uh, the Improved Care Net Now, uh, the Improved Care Now uh, data, uh, which was uh, originally uh, used for uh, improvement uh, of the outcome of children with inflammatory bowel disease. So two sets of data with 22 features was used and a single uh, targeted variable indicating whether uh, the treatment uh, has, is, is, uh, whether the patient has responded to the treatment. So we see exactly the same table as before and uh, Case told me there's no difference in terms of the calibration error AOC and HL. So in summary, we developed an easy-to-use web service to enable uh, privacy-preserving logistic regression construction uh, for biomedical researchers without need to exchange data at the record level. We have uh, made several extensions to this work. Papers are published, submitted, and uh, review and uh, under development. One interesting uh, extension is the differential private hybrid logistic regression model, uh, which we uh, take advantage of uh, uh, the open data in uh, healthcare. So uh, in many cases, we have some uh, open consented data that we can use, but a much larger cohort of private data. So this paper recently published at TBC, which I'm going to present in several weeks in Korea, uh, is leveraging this idea. So you can use uh, the public available data to calculate the HACI matrix and uh, calculate the gradient uh, on the private data with noise added, uh, but do not add noise to uh, the private and the public data uh, in terms of their gradient. And you iterating this step in a few iterations, uh, you get converged uh, and s use this model to output your parameters. So we use the three different data sets uh, and all these uh, experiments, which we use only 1% uh, of the public data randomly sampled from the whole um, population, uh, shows better performance at epsilon equals to 1 than uh, the po uh, we only use the public data alone or using the meta-analysis, uh, differential private version of the meta-analysis, like we first build model from each side and uh, weight these parameters to get a global model. Now we also tried out uh, different parameter combinations, uh, like using uh, different uh, division of the private data sets. Say uh, the private data comes from uh, 1 to 20 uh, institutions, and we also changed the ratio of the public data available and uh, changing uh, the regularization parameter and different privacy budget. And in most cases, uh, our method dominates the curve. Uh, most recently, we also extend this idea to a hybrid differential private support vector machine. In this case, uh, the paper has not been published, uh, but the basic idea is uh, if we have some public available data, we can select uh, support vectors uh, smartly so we do not uh, use our uh, privacy budget in blind. Finally, I acknowledge my team and appreciate uh, the opportunity to work with uh, many talented colleagues on this project. Thank you. Microphone? I just wanted to mention that there's some very recent work by um, Abradeep Guatakurta and Pratik Jain uh -huh. on dimension independent noise addition for logistic regression, uh, support vector machines, and generalized linear models. So the penalty that's paid for noise is independent of the dimension. You might find incorporating those techniques uh, will give you even better accuracy. I see. I can provide links. Oh, where is this paper published at? Uh, it's very new work. I, uh, I'm aware of it, Okay. but I, I don't know if it has actually appeared um, it's probably on the archive, and I don't know if it's a bit, if it's gone to a conference yet. Okay. Thanks.